So our speaker tonight uh, is becoming an old friend here, Mark Andre Valaket. Drove up all the way from uh, from Montreal today to be with us and to, to bring his his books. Um, I previously, when you've been here, Mark Andre, I didn't have a, a really detailed bio, but uh, I, I do this time, and uh, I'm going to just mention a little bit of it. Keep it short. <laughs> I will. <laughs> So, uh, so like many of us, he st discovered aviation at a very young age when his father used to take him to uh, the observation deck at uh, Dorval Airport. Uh, he's ex-military. He was uh, in, when he was in pilot training in Moose Jaw. He uh, discovered something called the Avro Arrow and uh, began collecting information about it over the years. And in 2009, um, the uh, commemorative year of the first uh, power flight in Canada, uh, 50 year anniversary, um, or sorry, 50 years after the Avro era was cancelled, he made the decision to share this passion in writing a four volume book series called The Destruction of a Dream, The Tragedy of Avro Canada and the CF-105 Arrow. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that. Uh, that series. Um, he's also written a souvenir book um, on the Arrow, again, uh, Canada's Supersonic Sentinel. Uh, he's also written a book on 425 Squadron, Chateau Plumeray, and a 75 year look at uh, 439 Squadron, Saber Tooth Tiger, Fangs, Fang, titled Fangs of Death. And he's here tonight to present his latest book, which is available in both a limited edition, and he's offering it to us for $50 off the regular $300 price, or the standard book, which normally retails for $60, offering it to us for $50. And uh, I know he'll be happy to, uh, to sign that for you uh, after the meeting. And uh, he's now retired after a 30-year career uh, with uh, Canadian Aviation Electronics in, in Montreal. So I can't uh, ask him to come up here just yet because uh, Terry Leversedge, who many of you will know, retired Brigadier General um, and former editor-in-chief, I think, of Air Force Journal, uh, just finished writing a review about uh, Marc Andre's latest book. And I'll just read part of it for you. It says, I suspect that many of our readers are perhaps like me and are familiar with or own some of the various RCIF base or squadron history books that were produced in the 80s and 90s for various anniversaries. While most of these rather thin histories filled, with import, filled an important gap in our heritage, the content and quality of, of some often left something to be desired. By comparison, Marc-Andre Valaket's latest superb release of the 75-year history of CFB RCF Station, Three Wing Bagotville, sets a new, very high standard in terms of both content and quality. This massive, fully bilingual publication is absolutely packed with content and features color and black and white images of virtually, on virtually every page. And I just flipped through a copy and it is just jam-packed full of photographs. There are color paintings, illustrations and cartoons sprinkled throughout and no pertinent subject is left unexplored. So, Mark andre would you like to... Uh... Thank you very much, John, for... Thank you very much, Tom, for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here uh, once again. And last time I was here was uh, for 439 uh, Squadron a couple of years ago. Um, just giving a bit of detail, the book, uh, of course, is f fully bilingual like all my, all my other books. Uh, Bagotville is, uh, was two years in the making. Uh, 75 years was uh, June 4, 2017. So it's 520, uh, sorry, 512 pages. It has 1,600 uh, pictures in it, uh, uh, black and white in color, of course. There's, a, like uh, Don mentioned, color painting. I think there's 19. There's illustration. There's even cartoons, which is a first in my books. 
175,000 work. Then uh, uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, they're printed and bound in Canada. I make it a, a point of honor not to have my books printed in China or India. You know, those are Canadian stories, so it costs me a bit more, but uh, it's very important. Uh, before I forget, because I always forget, uh, of course, the, the book is available at the, after. Um, my signature is free, so don't worry. And uh, uh, of course, I take cash, but I always forget to mention it, but I take also credit cards, <laughs> so, it, so it's done. Okay, so it's the story of uh, Bagotville, uh, 75 years of air defense. Like uh, Don mentioned, there's two editions, the regular edition, which is $60, usually including GST now tonight, and I do a special at 50. 75 copies of the uh, limited edition, of course, 75 years, 75 copies. They're signed, each of them are signed by the base commander, three wing, Darcy Molstan, which is now the military attache in uh, London. Out of these 75, only eight are left. And of course, they come in a box, they come, in, it's, uh, they come with a sleeve, and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, special details. You've got a coin, a 75 year coins. Uh, they're, they're all gone except the ones in the, in the, in the, in the case there. So, Bagotville, uh, that's 75 years. So, uh, this is the foreword by uh, Darcy Molstad. He flew there, uh, he was posted in Bagotville um, uh, many times. He flew with 433 Squadron, 425 on CF-18, of course. And he became the CEO of a 425 Squadron a couple of years ago. And in 2015, he became the uh, commanding officer of the uh, CFB Bagotville, Three Wing. And this guy is very historical, very, uh, very into it, and timing was, was perfect. Uh, when I did the book, because you need support from guys like that, you know, Alto Bagotville didn't pinch uh, money of the, to help me, but he was there, you know, as far as marketing and everything. And um, what I like is uh, the, the, the paragraph where, where he says, the renowned British novelist, Ridwa Kipling, once stated, if history were up in the form of stories, it would never be forgotten. He says, the historical narrative that follows about Bagotville, masterfully achieved this effect. So, and uh, of course, he, uh, he signed the book. So, uh, Bagotville starts in uh, 1942. You have to go back in time, 1941, 1942. You've got U-boat coming into uh, the St. Lawrence uh, River uh, up to uh, uh, Montjoie, Rimouski, very close to Quebec City. So, uh, there's a... Um, the, the, the aluminum uh, plant, the, alum, the, the, the dikes and the, uh, the, the dams that produce electricity for the aluminum plant in that video are very good target for the German. I mean, uh, looking at it today, I mean, it, maybe you could laugh at it, but in 1941, it was a, a real threat. And uh, uh, Arvida, and uh, there was, a, that, this is a 1943 uh, picture, Arvida was making 85% of the aluminum of the free world. So that could have been a target for, uh, for, for the, the German. You see the Sangne River uh, up there. So of course the aluminum, as uh, you all are all aware, uh, use, I mean, in, in an aircraft uh, production, you see this is the uh, vintage wings hurricane, uh, Canadian uh, hurricane. So you see uh, you know, a lot of aluminum uh, on it there. So it was, it was very, very important to protect that industry. So uh, the, the Canadian government decides to, to build a base close to Avida and um, it, will, it, it will be home to 130 Squadron, fighter squadron, who flies P-40 Kiriak out of Montjoly first, which is on the uh, south shore of uh, the St. Lawrence. And uh, so they will be based uh, there uh, uh, starting uh, uh, July 1942. But also the base will serve as an OTU, number one OTU, and it will be a fighter operational training unit, the only one in Canada. And they're going to fly hurricanes. So you see the, uh, the normal tri triangular uh, uh, display that, uh, the, of the BCATP. And there's, uh, there's four, uh, there's four anger, the fifth one is being built. And, uh, 
So uh, the, the, the base, as I mentioned, this is uh, the, the P-40 just landed from, from a 130 squadron on 14th of July 1942. They flew out from Montjali and uh, they, they, they landed there. Uh, they were not the first fighter aircraft being stationed in Bagotville. I mean, the base opened on the 4th of June 1942. The first uh, aircraft that protected the aluminum uh, plants were formed for, uh, uh, I hope I'm correct here, the 126 Squadron from uh, Gander. They flew Hurricane, it's in the book here. And it would be, but they had a couple of uh, Hurricane stations there for a month, then those guys came in. A couple of weeks after they arrived, a couple of, uh, I would say two months if I remember correctly, they, they, they started receiving uh, hurricanes. And the difference between the OTU and the, the 130 squadron is the 130 had the letters on the fuselage while the OTU had the numbers on the, on the nose. So you see the OTU here, the, the flight line. I mean, I, I think, if I remember, there's a couple of guys here. Are, used to fly voodoos out of Bagotville, so they, you'll see that the, the, still the, the main runway is still in, still in use. So you see the tarmac of the uh, number one OTU squadron, uh, OTU, sorry, and you got the numbering of, uh, of aircraft. At the point here, at, the, at, the, the, at, the, at the, the peak, they had 75 hurricanes flying out there. They had three Bolingbrooks, uh, target tug aircraft, Western Islanders, couple of Norsemen and, uh, and Tiger Mutt. And the only, one, the only aircraft that were equipped with radios were the Hurricanes from uh, 130 Squadron. And everybody was flying in the circuit. At one point, I, when I read in the operational record books, they said, at what point you, you had almost 40 aircraft coming in the circuit, and only the aircraft from 130 had radio. So I can assure you the guy on the control tower with the light and the gun had a full job there because the aircraft were not coming at the same speed. Uh, most of the training was done over uh, Lac Saint-Jean, which is west of, of the base. And they, had the, they could fire rockets there, uh, munition, you know, firing uh, on a, a drogue. I said on a drogue target in the back. And, uh, and uh, in 1943, they started to have cameras installed on the semi gun cameras on the hurricane and this is a very rare pictures of uh, the guy who's uh, nailing one of his friends in the hurricane of course they had a lot of accident it's it's unbelievable you know when you read the operational record book and unfortunately all the all the pictures they took all the negative were destroyed or they were lost at the public archives I and mean, we had the complete list of negative with the description, the description like you read the hurricane, uh, you know, taxiing too fast, it's the beach 18 of Canadian Pacific Airline on the tarmac, but you know, never got the, uh, our hands on the pictures. But uh, the, 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 we, we were able to get our hands, of course, on, on a couple of ones, and this is a colorized one, of course, of an hurricane who, uh, from uh, number one UTU, we did a forced landing in the field, and what's neat here is that the, uh, the, 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 the machine gun ports are, are blocked, but the guy has the, uh, the, the bomb uh, rack uh, uh, under the wings, and this, they didn't do that a lot of times. And, and you see that they, they, they just dismantle a bit of the wings, and they're going to, to, to tow the, uh, the aircraft with, uh, I don't know, a, a horse or whatever up front there. It looks like it's temperate sea gray back there. Is that is yeah, that one of the, is that one of the you mean the, here? yeah is that a, is that a, a navy uh, no, sea hurricane? It, it, that, uh, well, there are a couple there's, but you see it was colorizing, wow. so it's uh, it's dodgy. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We 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 were able to find out because the serial number is in the back there, but we we're able to find with the, uh, the number fifty, I think, or fifty nine. I don't remember. Uh, we we're able to find the aircraft. And what's, what's also, uh, a lot of people say in Canada we never had the hurricane with the, with the spinner because we had another, uh, not a different engine, but different... Uh, Hamilton standard. Yeah, exactly. But you see uh, either 130 Squadron or the OTU add some of the spinner. 
So you see, that th this is a page from, uh, from, from the book there. It's, uh, it's always in French and English. But you see the type of aircraft. This is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the wing commander of number OTU because he's got the yellow nose. And you see he's got the, 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 the nose cone here. The Harvard from the number one OTU. Uh, this is 130 Squadron. Harvard, here and here. You've got Bowling Brooks here. And you've got uh, other hurricanes here. And this is number one hangar. Uh, which had 130 squadron and number two, and from the control tower, number three hangars. Number three is still there today. It's used by 439 squadron. Of course, it's been refurbished, but uh, And in the back here, you see the infamous uh, Laurentian Park, where it, it takes you three hours during winter to cross from Quebec to <laughs> Chicoutimi. A couple of shots there. Uh, uh, Doing practice over the Sangney, you've got the uh, four aircraft from OTU and the guy there is coming. Th this is the, the commanding officer, he's got the yellow nose. So they had a photographic session in November of 1942 with the, I think, the National Film Board. So by the end of uh, 1944, early 1945, of course the, the war in Europe uh, is uh, it's going uh, uh, you know, coming to an end. So the base will, uh, will close by uh, April of 1945. And uh, they will only keep a couple of, uh, of anger. I mean, you see, oops, sorry. You see here already they, 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 they destroyed the uh, number one anger. Number two is still there. Today they use it for uh, transport. And um, uh, towards the end of, uh, of, uh, of uh, spring 1945, it's going to be used as a storage base for uh, Mosquito, the, the Avalon uh, aircraft of Canada. Uh, is trying to sell, uh, 46, 47, uh, it's trying to sell those Mosquito to China, nationalist China, and those are going to be stored there for a couple of years, and then after that they're going to be shipped to Halifax and then on two boats to, uh, uh, to China. So like a lot of bases, at the end of the war, the base closed, and uh, uh, only the, uh, the civil terminal, which is, we don't see it here, but it's a small house that just somewhere here beside anger number five. It's Canadian Pacific Airlines. They're flying Boeing uh, 247 and Beach 18, and that will stay open, of course, uh, for, uh, for the years to come. So 1948, 1949, and the uh, communists uh, uh, are uh, coming up, so uh, all the bases are reopened. They rearm uh, uh, the Air Force uh, like crazy. And uh, Bagotville reopens in August of 1951. And the first squadron there uh, is 413 Squadron. They're going, they're going to fly Vampire. Of course, some of you here, which have uh, keen eyes, will see that those are not 413. <laughs> this is, I think it's... Uh, I think it's a uh, 43 squadron, reserve squadron. I mean, in all the research, we were not able to find one picture of one 413 squadron vampire. They're almost non-existent, so we use a couple of other squadrons. They will only fly the vampire for a couple of months, from August to December 51, and uh, they're going to receive a Sabre aircraft. They were supposed 413 to receive CF-100 right away in 51, 52, CF-100 being late. So they're going to, they changed from an interceptor squadron to an air defense squadron, fighter squadron, and they're going to fly the Sabre. And finding a 413 Sabre in Bagotville is very, very hard, so of course we, we couldn't find one. This is 410. Uh, what is neat with the, with the book or any of my book, I've got a friend there who's pretty good with uh, Photoshop. So every picture in that book has been retouched, you know, clean and enhanced. So you've got very good quality. I mean, we got access to the negative uh, directly from the Canadian forces, and those are old and all that, but we can enhance them and clean them. So, uh, so 413 will, uh, uh, will fly a... Uh, Sabre for a couple of years at Bagotville. 414 will be there as well with Sabre until 1954 because they're going to do their training in Bagotville and then they're going to fly to Europe to be part of the Air Division for NATO. 
When a CF100 uh, becomes available, 440 becomes the first squadron in Bagotville to fly uh, the, the um, CF100. Of course, those are Mark III. And it's, uh, although it's the 440, it's Bat, Bat Squadron. I mean, it's, uh, they, they, they're painted with, uh, they're painted with alligators uh, tears, as you can see here. And um, luckily for the 1950s, we were able to find a couple of negative. You see, it's always a bag of dealer 440, 15 of March 1954. Mm -hmm. So apart from 440 squadron, a year and a half after, 432 squadron uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be flying CF-100 as well. Now it becomes, since the Sabre squadron are are gone to, uh, to Europe, so it becomes an air defense station, really, and uh, only interceptor will fly from there. And you can see the base now has, has expanded. You've got the brand new big hangar uh, for, uh, for the aircraft, and the, uh, the uh, alert, uh, they don't have alert hangar yet, so the alert uh, ramp is, is around here. And, um, uh, although they got new, the, the big new hangar, they're still missing space because, you know, the 1950s, the golden era, you got a lot of aircraft on the base there. Uh, in 1957, if I'm correct, 440 Squadron moves to Europe as part of the, of the Air Division. So 413, which is flying Sabres out of Europe, is disbanded and comes back to Bagotville and will fly uh, um, CF-100 as well. And those are very rare pictures because finding color picture of 413 is, a, is, a, is art. And those we were able to get it from uh, Dan McWilliams. His father was a navigator there and he was taking picture. And his father became a CF-104 pilot uh, with 439 after. Uh, what is neat, what we found out also there is that for a couple of years, uh, number 108 communication flight was based in Bagotville from 55 to 57 about. And um, so they, they flew their, their H-21, the flying banana there. They flew the S, uh, H-19, their S-55. And you see the ramp here. They, this is the uh, alert ramp and you see the 432 squadron um, CF-100 on alert there. Uh, since they, will, they don't have enough space, uh, 108 will move to Rockcliffe in those days, and they're, they're going to be stationed here until 1964, if I'm correct. So just to give you an idea, when it snows in the Saguenay, it snows. So this is 413. The guy there could be a bit of a setup, but I'm pretty sure they won't fly that air, those aircraft for those days. I mean, uh, usually, uh, you know, they're, they're still there. They still have that much snow there in the in Bagotville, and usually they got snow from September, end of September to uh, late April, early May. So with the uh, the, the the end of the, the the 50s, early 60s, so the CF100 becomes obsolete. So now they're going supersonic. So the uh, Bagotville is chosen to be one of the uh, few bases that will fly the Voodoo. Uh, of course. It, you know, when you do a book like that, every book I did, it, it's unbelievable. You read, and every year, every five years, you know, they, there's budget cut. They, they cut, they cut, they cut. It's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, they started, at, I think, with six squadron of voodoos, and they had one in North Bay, one in Ottawa, Comox, Bagotville, that's four, plus four, one, ten, so that's five. And it went 64. They closed the, um, the one in, uh, in North Bay, 414, the one in... Uh, in, uh, in Ottawa. So uh, in, uh, in uh, 1961, NL61, you got the, the number three OTU, which fly, uh, which is the OTU for the CF-100. It has moved from Cold Lake in 59, 1960 to Bagotville. And you got, so the number three OTU will fly the uh, Voodoo and 425 Squadron. And this is an early uh, uh, 1962 picture taken by our good friend, so Bo Darling one of the early, only guys who was taking pictures in those days. So, uh, and it's a 425 squadron uh, aircraft. 
1965, number three OTU will become, uh, by 1968, uh, number three OTU will become 410 squadron, which will be the training squadron for the Voodoo, uh, uh, for 416, for 409, and 425 squadron. So a couple of picture over, uh, over Shikutsumi, there in 1967, you see, uh, uh, it's after 1965, the flag. And see a couple of guys there. This is neat because we had found that, uh, we, had found, we, had, we had found that picture of this guy, no color picture of the 1960s with the, the early voodoos are rare. And this guy uh, there, we had the picture with no name. And it's nice when you can find the, the, the person. And I posted that on the internet. And then the guy comes in, Marcel Saint-Georges. Hey, he says, that's me there. And uh, you know, you see that, Things have, have changed. Times have changed because, well, he's got his uh, no, he's got his glasses, you know, holding there. But uh, you know, I, I had a lot of pictures, so I have to make some choices. But there's other picture where you know they're they're inside the hangars and they got their cigarettes, their or they're smoking their pipes in the hangar. So uh, you wouldn't do that today. <laughs> so uh, of course, uh, the, the 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 voodoo to be effective, they have to be armed with nuclear genie rocket. Of course, the government denied that we had the, we had the nuclear uh, armament either in Canada or in Europe. They're still de de denying it. But uh, that's a, to make it effective, the voodoo needed the nuclear tip Jenny rocket. It was, of course, under U.S. forces uh, uh, control. Control, see. control, and it was the four two. It's funny because it was four two five uh, main, uh, munition. Uh, the squadron there from the U.S. Uh, who was in charge. And of course you've got the press there that gets very alarming. So the, 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 uh, the newspaper from Shikutsumi there says, uh, oh, Hiroshima, uh, it says that Shikutsumi will become, a, uh, will become another Hiroshima, you know, because of that. And uh, so you see here they're doing some training uh, with, the, with the practice uh, genie rocket. You will see the guys have uh, the, the uh, uh, radioactive protection vest there for what they can do, but still you know, they're practicing. Of course, you have to have the, the control of the American and Canadian. And you're getting the, uh, the, the, the tip, uh, nuclear tip rocket from the compound there was 24 with armed guard. Uh, bunker is there. They're still there in Bagotville. They use it for storage now. So they, uh, they, so they fly the Voodoo in the 1960s, which is the main, uh, the main uh, aircraft there. You've got a couple of uh, Payaseki and H-21, the, the, uh, the air rescue there. And by 1968, you've got 433 Squadron, you know, with the Kingston forces coming in on February, February 1st, 1968. So they've got CF-5 that will do reconnaissance and support of the Army. Uh, again, well, I, I had good, uh, good luck to you know, find people who flew there and which were taking pictures. So, like this one was Jean-Pierre Ferrand, who was a pilot there. And he was 23 years old and he was flying 104 when he was 21 out of, uh, in Europe, uh, 421 squadron, you know, with the, you know, the, 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 the nuclear stuff. And then when the uh, Kinesian, the Kinesian government, of course, uh, uh, the budget cut of 1970 cut in half the 104 squadron in Europe. So a lot of pilots were uh, were free. So he came back to 433. A lot of pilots went to the states to instruct the the, the American because they needed pilot there during the Vietnam War. So in any case, you you got the nice CF5 picture, and this is the first refueling exercise they do with the uh, 707, the uh, the tanker there. Uh, and uh, they're coming back uh, from, from uh, their first, uh, first training exercise. And you see here, uh, one of the pictures, you see they've got what they call poppy suit. It's, uh, 433 was used to uh, support NATO out of Norway, and they were crossing directly, I mean, with, with refueling there. So in case they would, they would have to, uh, sorry, they would, they would have to uh, eject over water, so they had special suit there. And a couple of pictures the, you know, that Jean Pierre took over, you know, flying to Norway. A couple of uh, icebergs. So, nice picture again with uh, the uh, 707. And uh, we had two aircraft which had the, uh, the beach refueling pods there. 
So as I mentioned, uh, they, they, they had a rescue unit there, and the, the, of course they were uh, helping civilians in case of disaster. This is uh, 4th of May 1971, Saint Jean Vianney uh, landslide. Uh, big, I mean, uh, half of a village of about a thousand people during the evening. Big landslide, and half of the village went down. And uh, unfortunately, there were 13 persons who lost their life. But that's not a lot because everybody was uh, watching TV that evening because 4th of May 1971, the Canadians were making the, the series in those days. And there was a big game with Chicago, and everybody was looking at the TV. It was midnight. They were in prolongation. So since everybody was awake, so you know, a lot were able to escape. And this is the next day there, the, 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 the uh, rescue from Bagotville came and helped. Uh, I didn't put it there, but in the book there you see a lady, you know, coming out, went into her car and her car started to slid with, with the mud and she jumped on top of the, of, of the car and the car fell in the big hole and she stayed on the, on the top of the, uh, of the car for 12 hours until the, the, the daylight came and they were able to save her. So, uh, of course, uh, during the 1970s, the Russians are coming uh, very close to the coast. They start to come very close to the coast. They come to uh, the co close to Canada, sorry. And uh, they come with the Triple F-95 bomber or Triple F-142, the maritime version. And then you've got uh, you know, either 409 out of Kamaks or, or uh, 416 out of uh, Chatham or Bagotville. So they were intercepting those guys. And, uh, Usually they would come close to the, uh, what they call the ADIS zone, which is a buffer zone between the international water and, and, and our own uh, uh, boundary. The problem is that uh, we say we got a 200 uh, miles zone when everybody will recognize only 12 miles. So there's always a lot of politics going around still today. Uh, what is neat here is you can see that the guy has this, uh, it's an, uh, Early 1950s, mid 1950s bomber, so it still uh, uh, still has machine gun in the back. But when the guy has machine gun up like that, and my friend here can could confirm here. Je sais pas où, parce que le navigateur de ces de voodoo. C'est ça. When the guns are up like that, is the guy has friendly? Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. It that, be locked up in the top. Yeah, that's it. So it that doesn't uh, that is. He's not, he's not going to shoot at you, so. <clears throat> so, uh, 1984, the end of the voodoo. So they acquire a uh, uh, CF-18 uh, Hornet. First CF-18 will arrive in 1985 with 425 Squadron to replace the voodoo. And uh, the uh, CF-5 will be replaced in 1985 as well, 1986, uh, with the CF-18 Hornet. So you see, uh, this is 433 Squadron over Bagotville. So now uh, Bagotville, they got the budget to, to build uh, another bridge there. So uh, this is, this is uh, taken from the uh, Saguenay River. And uh, when you, you, you do chase from the back signal from a, of another CF-18, uh, uh, I was able to, to get picture from CF-1, uh, from Voodoo School as well. There's a, there's a statue there, I don't know if you did that in your days, but there's this, <laughs> he's laughing, he did it. There's the, a big statue there, you see the picture in the book there. The, 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 uh, Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary, big statue there. And the voodoo, I mean, it's, it's on the side of the, let's say, about somewhere around here. Uh, the voodoo, it's, it's, it's on the side of the, let's say, about somewhere around here. And the voodoo is flying at the same height of the, uh, of the statue. And, uh, so those guys, I mean, they, they, they fly on the river. Uh, there's a story that uh, at uh, Tadoussac, you got power line there, and the guys were flying as well on their power line. And they got cut a couple of years ago, so they, <laughs> they don't do it anymore. Uh, the uh, rescue uh, squadron there, uh, uh, 1993, the base, because we, we closed the base in Europe, uh, the Cold War is over. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the wing comes, uh, comes back to Canada, and Bagotville becomes three wings. And 439 Squadron, who's flying CF-18 in, uh, in Europe, uh, of course, uh, is, uh, it closes operation in, in uh, Baden. 
and they come back to Bagotville and they, they, they take over the rescue squadron and they fly T-Birds and uh, Iroquois helicopters in those days. And so this is why they got the tiger stripe uh, uh, chopper there. Um, you'll see here, this is uh, uh, the big hangar there, new hangar, uh, replaced uh, hangar number four and number five a couple of years, 20 years ago. And um, this is all the facilities they built for the CF-18, repair, the paint shop and everything. And here you've got the uh, turbojet engine, uh, uh, you know, engine uh, test cell. Uh, I was uh, talking, this is 433 CF-18 and uh, 439 uh, T-Bird. Uh, they, they had those T-Bird until 2002. They were doing uh, lead, lead in uh, training and uh, electronic countermeasure. Now this is all private, done by Discovery Air Defense Services with Alpha Jet. So again, 1996, the big uh, the big flood during the summer there. So you have a you have a, an idea here of, of of the flood. And I don't know if you heard about the little white house that stayed there. Everything here is is gone. I mean, what that was washed out, and only that. That small house there, now it's a museum, it's there. That's the only one that was able to stand of, of, of the flood. And you've got 439 uh, Squadron by 1996 had received its first uh, Griffin helicopter. So, of course, uh, had a big rescue there of, uh, of people uh, at 4, 413 Squadron from Green Greenwood, for, uh, 430 Squadron as well from Quebec City, 403, I think, from... Uh, Gander as well. You see they're bringing people, they had, they had a tent city on the base and people stayed there for a month until you know everything was settled, uh, came back to normal. So again, same thing, same aircraft with the gun up. The, the, this is 425 Squadron. 433 was disbanded in 2005. I think like for, uh, I think it was 441 in Cold Lake. The government decided that you didn't need two fighter squadron per basis, budget cut, but they said oh, we we're going to do one big squadron. Of course, they realized, uh, it's always a question of money, they realized a couple of years after when you had to do, uh, you had to send some of the guys in uh, Iraq or, or whatever on deployment, you know, you would send your, your commanding officer, your you know, some of the pilots there, then you know you would be stuck at the base with nobody to lead. Or so they came back ten years after they realized, hey, we made a mistake. Well, they didn't say that; they said it like that, of course. So uh, a couple of years ago, three years ago, they came back with two big squadron in Bagotville, four two five and four three three. In Code Lake, they kept four zero nine. They didn't reinstate it four two one because of political reasons that the name. And so what they did is the the uh, reactivated 401 squadron and uh, run squadron. So again, good shot from uh, taking off from Bagotville, close formation. I put a lot of, of personal stories in the book as well with the you know, log book, World War II. In World War II, I put the stories of an instructor, I was on with the OTU, a guy which was with, with 130 squadron, and um, Georges Nadon, who flew with the RAF in the Battle of Britain and in Mal Malta, came back as an instructor and went back with the RCF with 403 squadron, did 275 mission. And same thing from the 50s, the 60s, and up to uh, the CF-18 era. And I included that. That has never been published or acknowledged by the Canadian government, but I was able to, to publish it through my contact. They intercepted TU's to pull F-160 supersonic bomber over the coast of uh, Newfoundland. And more and more they're coming with those guys instead of to pull F-95. And um, the way we were able to, to, to know that they had intercepted those bombers the first time is uh, Richard uh, Gerois from, uh, from Bagotville is always there almost every day and he's got full access. And he took a picture of a nose of an aircraft and it had a blackjack, you know, a, a tent and an ace painted on the, on the nose, so it was uh, Sylvain Manau was the CEO of 425, so we asked him and he says, 
and he had his own camera. That was taken with his small Nikon camera. And only took one, but there were two Tubolev 160 coming in fast, and they were able to push them out. And uh, it's in the book there. You see the documents. You see his logbook. And it has never been, you know, big story, but this is what they're, they're coming now uh, to test our defense uh, close to the, uh, our coast. And more and more since 2001, Combat Air Patrol, Operation Noble Eagle. You know, a lot of patrols that we, we don't hear much, but usually when there's a big event, like Super Bowl, I mean, they send aircraft like 425 was based in Trenton to fly around Windsor, Windsor because the Super Bowl was in Detroit, or when the, let's say the Olympic Games or whatever there, so there's always a, a patrol. The G7 summit will be in Charlevoix in a couple of months, just north of Quebec. So those guys will fly combat air patrol under Operation Noble Eagle. The um, patrol just over Quebec City, you see. So Bagotville today, of course, the main runway has been extended uh, many times, uh, mostly during the, because of the ECF-100 and later on extended more because of the voodoo. You can see that, they, you know, that the, the original triangular was here, this one and this one here. This one has been closed for a while. And uh, so you've got the uh, anger number two from uh, World War II, anger number three. And you can still see the control tower, which is, it's not the control tower of today. Control tower of today is here. And um, you've got the big hangar still here, and we don't see it, but it's around here. Those, you've got the QRA, the Q Quick Re Reaction Alert. Always have two CF-18, 24 hours on alert. Um, the, uh, the original uh, hangar, this is hangar five, not four and five, but the original uh, uh, civil terminal was somewhere around near the house. Now, of course, you know, in 1967, they opened the, um, a new terminal here, and now it has been expanded. You've got uh, Discovery Air Defense here, flying Alpha Jet, we see them here. And uh, here you've got the Air Cadets landing strip for the, uh, the gliders. And this is the new, the new highway, which took 10 years to build, <laughs> to reach the base, opened a couple of months ago. So uh, this is at the end there. You know, I put a picture of a vintage wing hurricane, which I think is for sale right now. It's already been sold. Oh, it's already been sold. Well, okay. And uh, see, if you think just to show, you know, that the 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 first and the, the aircraft we're flying right now. Uh, just to show you, it's the first time I put that in my presentation. Is just to show you that the 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 work we have to do because I'm not just the author. I'm the I'm the, the, the head editor, the marketing guy, the guy who takes the boxes from his basement out of his truck and will bring, will bring them back tonight. So uh, at least it keeps me in shape. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of, uh, when you do, even after five, six, seven, ten times, you've got people looking you know, at, at your text. The text is correct. But then you put the text in the, you know, in, in the book there. You saw there's three columns usually of text. And that puts a lot of constraint and, and affination is, 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 you know, sometimes you will see CF with the dash and the 18 on the, on the, the line below. So there's a lot of details. And, and you see here, for whatever reason, you know, the, when I received the proof, you know, the pictures were, was double, was, was back, so I had to reject. Here, just small word because they were not the, either in italic or I had put maybe the wrong description. So there's always stuff you have, you have to look at. I'm very, very, maybe too much, but you know, I, have, I had 10 people, five French and five English, to review the text, to review the graphic. And then I, had, I went to press, and they, they, they gave me a proof there. And then I always go on vacation, and I read my proof you know, with a beer on the beach. And I found out of the 512 pages, even after Two months of review, I found 134 pages with errors. And I can assure you that cost you an arm and a leg because it's under press. And uh, so I, had a, I, had, uh, I played golf with the vice president a couple of weeks after, and I was, <laughs> I was able to, to cut the price down. But it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of work when you're there. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And this is what it looks when it arrives because, of course, 
you know, like Bagotville, I had four pallets of books. So I had two delivered the first time, and I'm alone to do it. So that day I was lucky because it was not raining, because usually it always rains. So I received the, the, the package here, you see it. I've got three pallets because the books, you got five books per, per box, but then I've got the empty boxes with the, with the, uh, the, 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 the books at the, uh, the black box there. Because when they could, sleeves? No, the, the sleeve, yeah. They could not ship the book with the sleeve because it would have been damaged. But it takes me about two hours. I take uh, you know, 10, 15 big boxes on the side and then I, I put them in my, uh, in my basement. And then, uh, so uh, it's a good workout. <laughs> and that's it. That, then it's not finished because like this, for the 75, I received them, you know, the box here, and then you got the, 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 the book. So, and then I had the coin, which were made by uh, the Sharks coin in uh, Victoria. But then, of course, you see the coin, and then you see this is white here, the board, the, the cardboard. So I had to take one box at a time with a black marker to fill that in black, and then to put this in there. And to bring it to Bagotville the day before the launch, I had the base commander sign the 75 limited edition copies. It took three hours, you know, and to, but we, we, we managed to do it. This is the book launch on May 23rd. You know, I was, I was lucky to get, you know, this is where the base, they don't provide financial support, they, they never do, but at least they give me the opportunity to use them, you know, for marketing because nobody knows me. Let's put it this way. And you know, if I ask for a CBC interview, they're going to say, "Who the hell are you?" So, I you know I used those guys, and I was able to get the uh, the demo bird, you know, in the, in the hangar. Of course, 439 Griffin, uh, Tiger Bird, and I had the 433 Squadron uh, uh, aircraft on the on the other side. And and it was a joint uh, press conference because they were announcing their uh, their their big issue, 75 years. And but you see, you know, I had my uh, my stuff there, and I had my five minutes of uh, of fame. You see, this is Richard, who who he, he puts a lot of hours there doing uh, the the picture there, uh, and then seeing the pictures, and so I'm doing four three zero squadron right now, and just for the uh, for the uh, the Kiowa and twin twin UA chapter, I sent him 50 emails with three or four pictures in each email. And he's, he's, he's fixing it as we speak. So this is the base commander. Of course, he's got, he got his uh, free copy. <laughs> no choice. <laughs> he got number one. I kept 75. So you see, that's it. I made, I made the, the, you know, the, the, the newspaper. And of course, once in a while. And this is during the air show here. And we had, the, we had a couple of F-22s in the back. So he's, he was coming out. And like I said, now he's in, um, he's in London. And this is uh, Bill Raddick, who was CEO of 409. Now he's CEO of, uh, of, uh, of the base there. And I put yeah, that, this is the cover of the new book. I mean, just to give you an idea, this is version number 16 of the cover. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since version seven or, or eight, we know it's that, but we always find something. You know, uh, you know that like they did. I don't know the quotation marks on that on that part. Right? In French, they're different. You know, usually, usually in French, I write what what we call the new French, and the new French, it's, it's uh, like any language, it evolves, and you don't put the uh, little ad there on anymore. But then, in all their 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 their, their crest and everything, you have it. So if, if I would have removed it, a lot of people would have said, hey, you made a grammatical error. So I decided to revert to uh, the old French. So that gives you an idea. That's going to be out in September, 13th of September. We do the book lunch at the Quebec uh, Citadel. So should be nice. So I think that's over. Yes, sir. So uh, that's it. Uh, I'm here for a question. There's a lot more in the book, of course. As I mentioned, a special price there, a ten dollar off, and uh, of course, if I, did, I only brought uh, three copies of the limited edition. I know it's a long shot, but uh, I removed fifty dollar out of it, and I only have eight left of the seventy-five. So.
And I brought the 425 and 439 squadron, my previous book. I'm liquidating. I need more money to do 430 squadron. <laughs> so they're available at $25 each if you want. Thank you very much. Wait, you're over, over here in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is a comment. There's what? one thing I was struck. I've uh, seen a lot of uh, training records of Second World War pilots. Uh, those who uh, trained in the OTUs in Britain and those who trained at number one OTU at Baggerville, they had a near identical curriculum. That's the only principal difference was that the lead-in aircraft in Britain was the Miles Master. Okay, and yeah. The lead-in aircraft in Bagotville was the Harvard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. They had a couple of Tiger mods, but the, 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 the lead aircraft was the Harvard. Yeah. You see a lot of pictures of the 130 Squadron or, or, or a number one of the U uh, Harvard. You're correct, yeah. Mark Andre, uh, do you have any idea how many Hornets are still flying? 77. Well, I mean, flying. We had 80 that were refurbished a couple of years ago, and we crashed uh, one in uh, Leadbridge, and we, and we crashed a couple of other more. So uh, officially, there's 77. 77. That's it on, on the on record. But uh, if they are all flying, uh, I would say maybe 40, 45. You, because each quadrant has about. You know, I mean, it's it. They don't say the number, but I think it's 17, 18 aircraft. Because there's a lot of under repair at the L3 in, in, in Mirabel. And, and even if they've been repaired, uh, the, 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 the big thing a couple of years ago, those 80 aircraft were, it was not just avionic, it was supposed to be structural as well. But then I think after uh, 40 of them, if the government decided it was too expensive, so they didn't fix the airframe issue. So now those are grounded. So I would say about 40, 45, but officially we got 77 in service. Okay, well that's it. Thanks very much, Mark Andre. No problem. You remember for another year. <laughs> you remember oh, okay. for another year. <laughs> okay. so we'll have you back next year for the well, next yeah, one. 430 Squadron, yeah. I'm going to send you an email. Yeah, I'm, I'm finishing this one. Well, that, that's the goal there. And then I want to write something about the Avro Jetliner for 2019. But that, that's a personal endeavor, and it will be only in English, this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.